How's everyone doing today? Big smiles. Good morning. How are you? Awesome. Doing well. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. So for everyone who is in the main session, I am Jamisha Lucas. Uh, I am the e-commerce strategist here at TechTown. Um, and I am so very excited to um, introduce our speaker for this breakout session. I have had the pleasure of getting to know um, Mrs. Tamika Reeves over the last, I guess it's been a year now. Um, and I was really excited when I saw that she would be our speaker. If you are not familiar, um, let me do the honors of letting you know a little bit about what you've already missed out on in life uh, by not knowing about Tamika. She is the founder of Transition Family Services, a private practice counseling center. Um, she's also the president of Protecting My Peace and creator of Loki, an online directory listing of Black and Brown mental health professionals, which we desperately need in our community and are so grateful for um, this tireless work that she's doing. She is a native of Detroit, Michigan. Um, she is a dedicated, she is dedicated to bettering her community and being a positive role model to youth and aspiring entrepreneurs. In this interactive discussion that we're going to have today, we are going to explore the ins and outs of and gain insight on managing personal relationships while growing and maintaining your business. Um, here's a hint, strong communication is key. This is a topic very close to my heart as a previous business owner in the city. Um, my small business was greatly impacted by the personal relationships that I had, as well as the relationship that I had with my former business partner. Um, relationships can make or break your business. So without further ado, I would like to introduce to you all Tamika Reeves. That was great. <laughs> that that was, was, really was good. thank you I'm like oh my god that's me she's talking about no but thank you so so much um so thank you all for for being here and tech time for inviting me um I am controlling these slides so I'm gonna let you guys know right now I am not tech savvy at all so when I share my screen bear with me <laughs> but again like Jamisha stated um, I am a clinical therapist I am um, the owner of transition family services so we are a practice in Southfield but we run on a virtual platform now because you know that's the way of the world um, and then the, also the the founder of protecting my peace and the creator of Locate Therapy. Um, so my background is, of course, very heavy in mental health and relationships. So I am excited and honored to facilitate this conversation. And that's what I want it to be. I know we're on this virtual stage. I'm, I'm a very kind of animated speaker. I talk a lot with my hands. I'm usually like walking back and forth when I'm in a room. So adjusting to this new virtual world where I know you guys are all there, but it kind of feels like I'm sitting here talking to myself, you know, I'm adjusting to it. So um, like somebody laughed at that. Somebody laughed at that, but I don't hear you. It's, it's, just, it's just me like telling jokes to myself, but I feel you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's different. It's an adjustment. Um, so what I would like, I want this to in, in, it's possible as we can to make this as an interaction between us all. So please use the chat box um, between myself and Jamisha. We're going to try to make sure we interact. If you have any questions, I don't want this to be just a lecture from me. Um, I'm not a professor. That's not my thing. So if you if you can interact, any questions, please don't hesitate to drop them. So I am going to share my screen. Um, look at me. <laughs> All right. So, of course, again, the topic is how to manage personal relationships as an entrepreneur. So this can get 
very intricate. Like we can go several different ways when talking about relationships and entrepreneurship um, because there are so many different people in our lives. Um, so first I want to touch on why would anyone become an entrepreneur even in the first place? You know, what brings us to the decision of, I don't want to work for anybody else. Like, I want to be on my own time. I want to work for myself. What are some of the, the causes um, or the things that lead us to that? So when we have financial freedom, you, you really just want to be able to control how much you make, what you make, and have that freedom um, when it comes to your finances, Two time management. A lot of people just want to be in control of their time. They want they are they're not interested in going to work at nine, getting off at, at five and just doing this repetitive thing. They want to be in control of their own time. Three ownership. You know, a lot of us, we want to to be able to have our name attached to something. Right. Um Wanting to give more to the industry. I know that was what it was for me personally. You know, working in my my corporate job nine to five as a therapist, I just felt that it was so much red tape, you know, so many loopholes. And I, as an actual therapist, wasn't even able to give my full self because I had to make sure I, I meet the needs of so many so much political stuff that was going on around me. Um, the desire to make more money. I mean, point blank, period, as an owner. The thought is, let's, let's reference that, the thought is that you'll be able to make more. And really, you, you typically do because, you know, a lot of jobs have salary caps. They have what you would tap out at. Um, want to lead. Um, so a lot of people want to be in this position because they, they want to have more leadership. They want to have more control. Um, notice that the industry is missing something that you can provide. Of a lot of entrepreneurs, it's not like they create the real, but they just make it better. Wanting to help others, self-explanatory or personal goal or aspiration. Some of us has just always had a desire to have our own business. To be able to pass down a business or create generational wealth. You know, a lot of people, especially us as African-American, I don't want to start something for our family. You know, we want to, uh, some of us have are in businesses that have been passed down to us, which is beautiful. It's a beautiful birthright. And then some of us want to create that, to create that general wealth for um, our, our family going forward. So let's jump right into how does our desire, what led us to become an entrepreneur, entrepreneur lead to how we manage then these personal relationships? Um, I want us to look at an example. It says, a wife comes home and says she's quitting her job to start a business. How does she work through the husband saying, we can't afford it? Or deal with some of the reactions from family and friends that may be supportive, may not be supportive. So I just want us to bookmark this. Right now, we're just bookmarking it. This is an example of a very real life personal situation that a new entrepreneur may go through where their spouse is saying like you quit your job we don't have money for this like we can't afford what a, what it takes to start a business and then she tells her family and friends and they're like you about you stop working for what what you about to do oh i heard of somebody that had that business and it didn't survive well you know they had one down the street and they closed down Girl, that's going to be hard. You know how much time that's going to take? You, she's not getting the reaction that she wanted for, for, from friends and family. So then let's look at expectations. The first thing you have to look at in yourself when you decide to be an entrepreneur is what are your expectations of the people around you? Because a lot of our disappointment comes from having these preset expectations of how people are going to react to and deal with us. Not understanding what this journey actually looks like. A lot of people go into entrepreneurship because they're good at what they do. They're good at what they do. So naturally, 
they assume that if I'm a good therapist, I should open a practice. Duh. Like that's what makes sense because I should be, I should do well at running that business because I do way I'm a good therapist. Your skill set as a professional or your desire is different than what it actually takes to be a business owner. Two totally different skill sets. You know, so understanding what that journey actually looks like. What does it look like to run a store? I like clothes. I like fashion. But does my passion for this directly links to what it takes to actually run a store? Because those are two different things. So first and foremost, do your research. Understand what will be needed from you to operate that business. And I know you may be thinking like, well, what did that have to do with personal relationships? It has a lot to do with it because it starts with you. You have to understand your own expectations, what this business looks like, what do I need in order for you to manage your relationships as an entrepreneur with the people around you? What time will be within the business that's going to take away from me being other places like at home? So if I don't understand and I don't have a, a, a clear expectation of how much time it's going to take for me to be in the storefront and I have not discussed this or, or even thought about this beforehand with the people in my household, naturally, when these situations come up, when I'm knee deep in it and I usually cook dinner every night, but now I'm at the store every day. Now I'm at the office all day. Now there's disappointment from the people in my life because they don't even understand. There was no, there was no warning about this. All I know is, yay, we have a business. Mommy is an owner. Daddy is an owner. My wife owns this. My husband owns this. But we haven't even done the research to know really what this journey looked like. So thus the expectations that people have of you and even you have of yourself, they're not realistic. So you start this journey with these unrealistic, unrealistic expectations of what it actually is going to take and what it looked like. It probably will be lack of participation in activities um, people are used to seeing you at. You may not be able to go to every birthday party. You may not be able to take every trip with your friends. You know, you may not be able to show up at everything that your family has going on because you got to be, you got to make up for the, the lack of employees that you have right now, you know, or you got to stay and you got to crunch the numbers for the business. You know, like your, your time now looks different as an entrepreneur. When, when we start businesses, it's like, adding another family member to the household like this is literally your child we most of us look at our businesses like a, one of our babies you know we even refer to it like this is my baby so with that just like any of you who are parents know when you add another family member when another little person comes into the household everything changes our roles change, how we move change, our day-to-day -day changes, like literally everything changes. And so the desire and the passion to, to be an entrepreneur, to start a business, that's, that's just the foundation. That's not good enough. That's not good enough to, to lend to success in your business and to success in managing your relationships. One of the main things this has to be is that you take a realistic look at the expectations and how life will change, how roles will change, how time will change, how money spent and revenue will change. As we, some of us know as business owners is um, you don't always have a, a surplus in the beginning. You know, a, a lot of times you are in the red or breaking even. 
And so does that meet our expectations of what we have in the idea? Because we all trying to make money. Let's be real. We love what we do, but we want to get paid for it. Right. <laughs> so do I really know what this will look like for my finances? How this will affect our, our yearly family vacation? How this will affect Christmas? You know, what, what does it look like if we do good? But what if it looks like if we doesn't, if we don't? Like, what if we don't meet our goals for the first quarter? How will this affect me personally and the people around me? S create a business plan where you explore all assumptions and risk that you can think of. You know, you have to be aware of what your expectations are in the beginning. You have to be aware of what could possibly go wrong. You know, um, I, I specialize in anxiety. So a lot, I work with a lot of clients and a, a lot of people who are dealing with anxiety. And that's almost all of us now in this world that we live in with this pandemic. Um, anxiety is the state of worry. Sometimes irrational thoughts. When you are starting a business, you, you, you need to brainstorm. You need to look at every worst case scenario. You need to be aware of what could happen. You know, you can't just rely on what you hope will happen because sometimes that's not, that's not the first step. You may get there, but that's not sometimes the first step. And you need to be prepared because that affects your personal relationships. It affects everyone around you. So when looking at everyone around you, we then have support. You know, we have the idea of what does support look like from my family, from my friends. One thing that I like to stress to people going into the field of entrepreneurship is this statement here. My dream is in fact, my dream. I will not be offended or dismayed if you do not put my type of energy or to support my dream. So what that mean is everybody won't understand your vision. That's why it's yours. So a lot of times when we start businesses, especially us as starting small businesses, we bring aboard people that we, we're, we, we know, that we're familiar with. We may go into business with our friend. We may go into business with our family member. We may have someone in leadership that we know, you know, that's, that's related to us. Because when we're excited, we're excited. We have this idea. We want to share it. We want the people around us to share it. We want them to prosper and grow just like we are. And a lot of times they are too, like they're excited. They have great intentions, but a lot of times there's conflict because you notice that they don't support the dream the way that you, you, you want them to. Like they don't care maybe as much as you do. And then that hurts. And so now we are, it's not just the business side of things, it's now it's the personal side as well. Because you don't care. You don't want to see me succeed. You're trying to sabotage me. You know, you don't, I thought, I thought you loved me. <laughs> you know, this is deeper than that. I thought you cared. I thought you loved me. And remember, this is my child. You know, this is my child. And how offended are we when we feel like somebody doesn't show love, support, and care to our children? Um, I will tell a very brief, brief story, a personal story. I went into, I have a cousin who was in the same field that I'm in. And so, um, it was, it sounded like a great idea to partner on this one uh, initiative that we had. Um, and initially it was going good. He seemed just as interested as I am. I was, um, I, I thought of the idea, but he it would seem just as interested. Well, as time progressed, work needed to be done. You know, 
it sounded great when it says, yeah, me and Tamika are in partnership and we're going to do this and we're going to do that and it's going to be great. But then it came to the part where work needed to be done. And I noticed that I was doing all the work. Like, what in the, like, <laughs> where are you? I, you're, you don't show up. You're, where are you? And so I got frustrated. I was super frustrated. But as I learned recently, because I am in the Goldman Sachs <laughs> 10K cohort, I have a very amiable style um, of leadership. So at the end of the day, I didn't want to, I didn't want to say anything. I just kind of took on the, the rest of the work because I don't want to ruffle feathers and eventually it'll click in. Then one day he came to me and said, hey, Tamika, I'm thinking I should probably pull back, but I think you're doing great. How about this? Call me when you get it all together and up and running and I'll be the director of the program. You have got to be kidding me. <laughs> I'm like, it, are you are you serious? And initially I was because we're, we're not even just talking about business. Again, this is personal. I know you. So this is deeper than my business. This guy, Now I'm thinking like, this is how you would do me, right? And then I had to sit back and think to myself, Tamika, even when it's personal, it's not personal. And I want y'all to take that one with y'all. And like, that's a life thing. Like, that's just not an entrepreneurial business thing. That's a life thing. Even when it's personal, it's not personal. Even when it feels like a person is like, doing you dirty, not caring about you, not have your best interests at heart, you have to remember that how they treat you is a reflection of them. He never was built to be me. He never was built to carry out the vision of my company the way that I had. That was never, for, it was never for him. You know, like God put that on me. He gave that to me. He didn't give it to him. And so I had to realize this wasn't an attack against me. This was just clearing my path, the people that were not meant to be on my team. No matter how much I love them, no matter how much I wanted to see them like grow with me, it wasn't meant to be. So instead of me having all these adverse feelings of angry frustration and now our little cousinhood is messed up, we good. We are, you are cool with me because like we are great. But no, I will not call you when I need a director. That will not happen. But <laughs> we are good. So fill your space with people that understand what you are experiencing as a business owner. This is another key concept. Um, a lot of times your family won't get it. And the support that you're looking for, they, they don't even have the capacity to give it to you. They don't understand that if they don't themselves have a business that they're running, they may quite probably don't speak the same language that you do. So the emotional need that you have is hard for them to feel it. And that even comes with spouses sometimes. Like, yes, this is the person that possibly know you the best, but if they're not knee deep in that business with you, some things they just won't get. And so then you're looking for this, this, this need to be fulfilled of feeling like somebody understand you and then they don't. And so now we have this tension because now I feel like a lack of love, a lack of appreciation, a lack of support when it's not really that they maliciously don't want to support you. They just don't really understand what you're going through, you know, so fill your space with people that understand network with other business owners. Join organizations that foster relationships and connection with people that share the same struggles and the grind as an entrepreneur that you do. So now it's, I'm not looking for my husband to kind of support the need that I have to about my business. Yeah, we talk about it, but I may go to my, my connections through the different groups that I'm in and talk about that. And I know that they really understand and which leaves it for the, my husband's responsibility to kind of just be my husband and support me as as me being his wife. So make sure that you understand your expectations of people, understand your expectations of, your, of yourself, realize that 
what you may need from somebody they're not even capable of giving. Thus, I don't have to have this emotional burden on me because I'm feeling like my family doesn't care. Another thing is set boundaries and establish roles. So this is very important when you are going into business with someone that you, has a, you have a personal relationship with or they work into, in your business. Um, sometimes personal and professional roles overlap. Thus, conflict can become awkward and confusing to manage. You know, so when you, if you go in and you set clear roles from the beginning, if you're over marketing and I'm over day-to-day -day operations, it's less likely that we'll bump heads because I know what I'm supposed to do and you know what you are supposed to do. You know, um, don't assume that the way that you maneuver through your personal relationship will be the same way that you operate in your business relationship. You know, you are my best friend and we are tight. We talk every day. You tell me all your business. Like we laugh, we giggle, you're fun loving. But I don't know how you operate as a business owner. And so the reality is I'm very um, detail oriented. I'm meticulous about how I want things to go. You know, I'm organized. Meanwhile, like you're the complete opposite. And that caused a direct conflict with us in business. It ain't no more laughing and kicking. It ain't us talking about everything and having a great time. No, it's, it's me realizing that I don't want to be in business with you. Don't assume that the way that you guys maneuver in a personal relationship will exactly be how it be in professional, because those are two totally different things. And with that, have all your business legalities in place in the beginning. It's not personal. This is business. Discuss worst case scenario situations. Put it on the table because everything won't be roses and rainbows. So instead of us having this conflict at the end, because I didn't know, we, we talked about this and we got it in writing. Create exit plans. You know, what, what is our exit plan for both of us? What does it look like if you work for me and I feel like you're not meeting the needs of the, of the job. This is what it looks like. You, as my cousin, you will still, if I feel like you are this, I will have a conver uh, informal conversation with you. If the needs are still not met, you will get written up just like everybody else. If the third time it is still not there, then I will have to fire you. Just know, I love you. We still gonna meet at grandma's house and we still gonna play spades and you're still my partner, but you may get fired. So I need you to know that. If we are partners, and I decided I don't, you decided you don't want to work in the business anymore, or I decided I want to sell it. What does that look like? How does this conversation, how do we split it? Like, talk about exit plans, discuss worst case scenarios, put an action plan in writing, discuss risk and assumptions, have contracts, discuss finances and percentages. Like, these are sometimes very uncomfortable conversations, but I promise you they're necessary. Because when it comes to entrepreneurship and your personal relationships, you have to be able to have boundaries and draw the line. So <laughs> this is a big one, of course, because all of these things revolve around communication have clear, effective, open communication. This is one of the most important factors in maintaining health and relationships as an entrepreneur. And that means with the people that are within the business with you and even your people on the outside, you know, that means you have to be okay with being vulnerable. We don't like that. I'm just gonna let y'all know that right now. We don't like that. We don't like especially us type of people. And by us, I mean leaders. <laughs> We're used to being strong. We're used to having it all together. We're used to figuring out. So admitting when you need help, talking about when you feel overwhelmed, 
letting somebody know when you're tired or burnt out, you know, showing your frustration, letting somebody know when you hit a dead end. These are these are typically things that we struggle with. Because not only do typically people around us have an expectation of us, um, we have an expectation of ourselves, you know, and that weight can get heavy sometimes, but we carry it like a badge of honor. And we have to learn that it's okay with not being okay, even as a business owner. And so we don't want to hold this stuff in and then take it out on the people around us. You know, seek help when you need, because you never know how someone around you may be able to assist you. So accept assistance. Be open to hearing constructive criticism. Um, And be realistic. Communicate clearly how you plan to show up for the people around you. You know, the first few years, especially when you start a business, sometimes it's rough. You know, it, it takes a lot, a lot from you. Energy, you know, time, finances. So be realistic with your family. You know, mama may be used to Christmas time, you spoiling her or Thanksgiving, you being a person that cook all the food and bring it. But guess what? Now I have a store. And during that time, that's our busy season. And so I can't do that, mama. Like I, I can't, I'm gonna let you know right now, this is how I'm going to be able to contribute. Now, does that mean that everybody will be okay with how things may change no because people resist change that's just human nature is we resist change but guess what they get used to it and they can't say that they didn't know because you communicated it with them early on so be sure to communicate have open communication have vulnerable communication um, especially with those people that are closest to you and do some self-reflection reflection very early of how do we meet the needs of the business while maintaining our own? How do I feel secure as a parent and as a mother as well as being a business owner where I, when I can't make every recital, I can't show up for every game? You know, how do I feel secure as a wife when me and my husband are on opposite schedules pretty much now. So we kind of just running past each other. And I feel like I'm giving more to the business than I am to my family. You may not have that balance. And I don't even like to use the word balance because really balance balance is this thing that float in the air that we're constantly grabbing at that really doesn't exist. But you may not be able to find that happy space where you are, feel like you're meeting the needs of everybody, including yourself. So be realistic of what different seasons of entrepreneurship will look like for you and the people around you. Discuss it, come up with plans, come up with alternative ways to to meet the emotional needs of everybody, but just have real effective communication. So with that, I want to take a look back. Let's take a look back at this scenario. So this is where hopefully I won't feel like I'm in the room by myself. (laughs) Because I want to take a look back really quick and I want us to look at this. And from what we just discussed, because I'm going to call it a discussion, what we just discussed, what do you think are some of the things that... um, What stands out to you with this? Wife comes home and says she's quitting her job to start a business. How does she work through the husband saying we can't afford it? So let's let's start there with the husband and the wife. What stands out? Anybody? Or what do you feel like she could have done differently? Definitely prepped him before that conversation to let her know kind of what her feelings and aspirations are. That, that should be something that's already kind of known 
and not be a big surprise because I've had that one. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Like it says that she just came home. You know, she just came home and told him, I, I quit. I'm quitting. <laughs> Anybody else? That, she could have had yeah. that discussion with him about quitting her job before she quit. Yeah. That yeah. sounds like a an emotional decision. You know, mm -hmm. I'm fed up. I'm walking out. But even if you flip the coin and her husband came home and said the same thing to her, it's the, it should be the same conversation. Yeah. It's, you know, let's sit down, let's have a discussion because, yeah, you could be frustrated with your career or maybe you don't like your job, you hate your boss, but let's look at how this is going to affect our family and how things are going to look moving forward. That's not a decision that anyone can make in a vacuum. Yeah. Well, I kind of had that experience. Mm -hmm. And um, when I came home and mentioned it to my husband, it was because I had just had it. Mm -hmm. And then his response was, well, you haven't made any preparations. And my response was, I was angry because we hadn't been married a long time. And I said, if, if when I was single, I was just footloose and fancy free. I did what I wanted to do. So what do you mean? So then, but he was right. You know, I had to think about it. So then I asked my mom, well, I told her, she said, well, how can you do that? You know, how can you, well, I had two, I had a bit, I, I worked and then I had a business, which is why I'm on this call. Mm -hmm. That was like, my business is now 30, 38 years in the making. Mm -hmm. But um, she said, how can you leave, you know, the children? You know, I said, well, I'm not making any money. You know, I can't do that. So long story short, I had to go, you know, into prayer i said okay i, I need some help mm -hmm. so what am i i know i'm burning the candle at both ends i can't continue to do that so what do i do so then you know it became a very spiritual thing but i certainly understand um the situation because i think you have to be honest when you come home to say that and when you say it is because of of what you have experienced and you know you need something different yeah. Yeah. So, and it, it, and you can see how, like, she didn't have malicious intent, just like you didn't exactly. have malicious intent. Exactly. It's not, you know, it's not like, oh, I don't value you, you know, what you feel isn't important. You, like, you, like, was mentioned before, it's more so of an emotional decision, exactly. like emotions led. We usually, yes. we usually operate either off of emotion or logic. One yes. or the other usually lead. Yes. So, although yes. they don't have value, in that moment emotions led but then that also can then lead to the husband then having his emotional feelings behind it of well god what about me like right. you didn't consider me and now there's this issue within our marriage that isn't even a marriage issue really it's just it has to do with the entrepreneurship but that's what it led to so understanding you know that the, it's layers when you had adding these personal relationships and these kind of typical situations of entrepreneurship. And then that goes into the second part of it. And you even touched upon that. Uh, what about dealing with the reactions of family and friends? Because it sounds like when you told your mom, the first thing she did was like, wait a minute. I don't know if this is a good idea. Like, exactly. And I needed to hear what both of them had to say, because clearly it was emotional. You know, I am emotional and I know that. And they both had to kind of like bring me around, which still didn't give me the answer. But eventually they gave me the foundation for the answer. It's like, OK, this is bigger than me. It's bigger than us. It's bigger than this job. OK, God, I need you. You know, what am I supposed to do? Mm -hmm. So, Like I said, here we are today. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Anybody else? Any anybody else have any um comments specifically about this scenario or just would like to bring up any similar situations that they may have experienced and how it correlates to what we've discussed? Well, I think it's probably important to just think about the why and discuss the why, right? Mm -hmm. Like why am I quitting? Um so, and, and that's probably important both to discuss within yourself and also with others, right? So you're sure 
of your motivations. You know, you were talking about motivations, right? Mm-hmm. So it's it's not just a bad day or even a bad week or even a bad month, right? If it's about if it's a big project, but there's something deeper that is either inspiring you or that is work out for me. So probably important. Yeah. It's kind of like what we mentioned, like at the beginning of why do we go into entrepreneurship and understanding, you know, it could be more than what I listed there, but is it, is why you're going into it? Cause you're mad at your boss right now. That may not be a great motivating factor because this is a long road and it's a lot that goes into it. It's not just about you wanting to do a certain job. You know, it's bigger than that. So like you said, being aware of your why um, and like, d- does this make sense for the journey that you're trying to take? Thank you. Thank you for that. Well, I can talk about my why if no one else, you know, wants to say anything. I don't want to take up all the time. But for me, like I mentioned, I was burning the candle at both ends. I had a full time job as a teacher in the Detroit public schools. And I had a a passion, which was my little business, my dance studio. I would leave work. I would go to the dance studio. By the time I got home, it was time to go to sleep, to get up and start start all over again. And even though I was very passionate about everything, um, I knew that I couldn't continue at that rate, at that pace. So the why here again, for me, because of the type of person I am, very emotional, spiritual, and passionate, my, my drive or my passion was because of what was inside of me. It had nothing to do with money. It had nothing to do with anything except, um, you know, what I felt I, I need to do with, with me, you know, with my life, with what God put me on this earth to do my calling. So, you know, I was able to get through it, like I said, and understand it, but it wasn't anything really, as you say, logical. <laughs> it was more spiritual. <laughs> spiritual and like okay it's time you know that was just my time yeah and you know what as just in general when you recognize like that you may be either a logical person or an emotional person like how you lead you have to then be intentional on the other side so the emotional part is natural you don't even have to think about it like that's natural But then sometimes you probably have to take a step back and say, okay, but let me think about what makes sense in this situation. Let me evaluate the the outs and the ends and, you know, the business side of it, you know, know, you know, so that that's just in general period with people. Typically we lead either on an emotional route or a logical, I'm an emotional led person. So I remember at the beginning, I was giving out free therapy like it was hot cakes because it's therapy. <laughs> and you feel right. you know, like, I'm like, oh, OK, you only have $20 for a session. Come on in. And right. then I realized, you can't operate business like this, Tamika. You know, you can't leave with emotional, even though you you care, you know, right. so being aware of that just in general <laughs> um, <laughs> as people. Um it's, 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 it's a good foot, a good foot. No, Jamisha, did you want to add, add something? I know you got your, your own thing with this. Absolutely. Uh, th- I was just saying, I'm like, I need to sign up for a therapy session because this entire conversation just hit home for me. Um, Cause it's, and it's so funny because I did not choose this session as uh, it was chosen for me. I'm like, did my team know? Like, did I share with them the ins and outs of what I've been? Almost every point that you hit on is a personal experience that I've had. So um, when I started my business, I had just gotten married. Well, actually, I wasn't even married yet. So when the business first started forming, me, um, you know, I didn't feel um, similar to what Deborah just said. I didn't feel the need to discuss it with my then boyfriend because he wasn't my husband. And so I'm like, even though we made all of our decisions together and we were planning to get married, 
um, we weren't there yet. So when I started making plans for the business, I didn't really feel the need to consult him. But uh, when the business actually got started, we were married. And it was four months after we got married that I had to make the impossible decision on whether to leave my corporate career and go full time in the business or, you know, pivot in the business because my business partner had relocated to a new state. And when we talk about partnership agreements and making sure that things are discussed in every possible um, scenario, like you can't think of every scenario that might happen in your business, but you definitely want to think of some of the most outlandish things, honestly, because I would have never assumed that, you know, my best friend would have to relocate and my best friend was my business partner. And to see how doing business can truly um, bring out a different side in those relationships is just mind blowing, you know? Um, and I 100% am <laughs> like preaching about partnership agreements to everyone. And it doesn't matter who your business partner is. Um, just echoing what Tamika said, it doesn't matter if it's your best friend. It doesn't matter how long you've known someone or, uh, because how we operate in business is just different and different situations will create um, new, I guess, new situations <laughs> in those relationships that you never imagined. And so I can't stress how important that is. And uh, honestly, the importance of therapy being a business owner, um, because working like that self piece is so critical. And I don't, I think if I did not have a therapist when I was going through this, uh, I don't know what, I feel like I would have lost my mind <laughs> because it is so personal. You know, you, I remember saying like, my business was my full-time job and my side hustle. And as a new wife, I didn't really think about how it would impact like every piece of my first year of marriage was impacted by the business. My first two years of marriage, honestly, you know, when we went to go buy a home, it was different then because as a business owner, you have to show, you know, two, I think it's two years of income from your business in order to be able to buy a home. I didn't think about that. I didn't think about how that would impact our marriage and what that meant for the legacy that we were creating because in my mind, the business was our was a part of our legacy, right? So I've put so much focus into that. And so um, I'm always willing to share my story. Um, I know a few people have already signed up for sessions with me. And so um, if you want to hear more about my story, I'm so happy to share. I'm grateful for the opportunity to be at Tech Town and to um, what I consider pay it forward because I was a Tech Town client uh, before working here. So as a business owner, I was on the other side of the table. I've been where you all are. Um, I've been on all sides of it. So it's just, it's so critical. Um, I know we still have a little bit of time left. I'm happy to answer any more questions that anyone has. Um, I know Tamika's available to answer questions. So if you want to come off mute or if you want to put your questions in the chat, I'm happy to kind of go over that as well. I'll give give a second if anyone has any questions. I have a question. Okay. I work with I work with business owners um, and I'm an entrepreneur working full time myself as well. How do you help people because that's my job. I'm a resource. How do you help people understand that they do need to talk to somebody when they're already struggling with the financial aspect, knowing that if they got out of their head and out of their mind, out of, you know, out of their thoughts versus negative or positive, that it would be beneficial to help them see how to move forward, if that makes sense. So, so you mean like, how do you get a person to see that they need to talk to somebody like on a emotional side of things of like you need to... Because you, like you said, it's 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 an us thing, and it's almost like we're our worst enemies, mm -hmm. but at the same time, we're all, we're also our best cheerleaders and champions in our foolishness. Mm -hmm. So, it's how do you get somebody to understand or get them to the point that they realize that they need 
to have a conversation. I'm going to say conversation because you know we don't like to say therapy. That they need to have a conversation with someone to ensure that they're going to, so you can put them back. Like I don't have a problem with checking in with people because I like I like to know that I'm not going crazy or the things, the ideas that I have are not foolish. Yeah. But I know people that don't, they believe that their ideals are like set in stone and yeah. nobody should deter them and it is what it is and will go full fledged like for, for you know full throttle and then crash and then wonder what happened yeah that's 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 a difficult one because again um you can't help somebody that doesn't want to help themselves um so it, it is very hard to be on the outside looking in and know like you can i mean that's just my life story period i just like please go to therapy please talk to somebody i promise you <laughs> you will be better on the outside but um i think just normalizing it empathizing with them you know people people don't like to feel attacked people are usually resistant when they when they feel attacked so they feel as though that you are attacking their character attacking how they are as a leader attacking their business so be mindful of the words that you use um in terms of saying like you need to do this you need to do that more so allow them to like raise questions and raise scenarios that allow them to explore a little bit more and then bring in the resource like oh well you know it probably would be better i think it would be very beneficial if you sat down with somebody and explore this, like you, you do know that therapy is not about you being broken. You know, therapy is not about being broken. It's about giving yourself that time and that space to figure things out. So you don't become worst case scenario. Um, so breaking down that stigma rather than saying like, you need to go talk to somebody, even though we know that like, that's, like the bottom line <laughs> you need to go talk to somebody um but just being mindful of how you put it to it because again to me to be perfectly frank when it comes to us as minorities like therapy being vulnerable like we've been raised on strength point blank period you know all our grandmas told us you don't talk out the house you be strong and you pray about it that's our found that's typically like our foundation and that's not even just black that's just minorities a lot of times period but definitely in the black culture so the idea of showing vulnerability to saying that i don't have it figured all out to then going to a complete stranger and putting your table problems on the table especially when you're not even familiar with this complete stranger looking like me and talking like me you know when we think of therapy to be honest with you we think of an older white man with a clipboard sitting on a couch with his hands, his legs crossed, writing down everything that you say. Therapy doesn't necessarily look like that. And he may meet the need. He could be great. There's nothing wrong with him. He could be great. But that may not be what everyone needs. Therapy is very intimate. It's personal. So typically, we want to find somebody that we feel the most comfortable with that understands the language that we're speaking. And that's why minority therapist is very important. That's why I created Locate Therapy, where you can go on there and you can search for a, a therapist that fits your needs. Shameless plug. But um, <laughs> but yeah, so my 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 like bottom line suggestion is being mindful of the language you use when you suggest it, providing that maybe that resource, giving them a link and empathize with them um, so they don't feel attacked. But at the end of the day, it's only so much you can do can't help somebody that doesn't want to help themselves. And some people, unfortunately, learn by crashing and burning. I think there's so much to be said. Um, I feel like this is a conversation that could literally go on for days. Um, but I think, you know, the key takeaways that uh, Tamika has given us today, I hope everyone was taking notes. If you weren't taking notes, um, so feel free to reach out to me because I was taking notes <laughs> and, I will, and I will give you the notes. Uh, but so, so grateful for Tamika for your time today. Um, I know it was invaluable for me. I hope that everyone else felt that way. If you did not walk away with um, new thoughts about how you manage yourself, manage your business, your relationships, um, just I want to say that this session was the 
it looks like it was the most attended out of our sessions, um, which should show how important this is. And I'm so happy that you all felt that this was really important. Yes, Brooke, I see your message. I'm happy to share notes. Um, and just, I'm, I just really implore you all to take the time to invest in yourself and in your business by talking to someone, talking to business advisors, talking to therapists. There is, I, I kind of consider business um, strategy sessions kind of like business therapy in a way. Um, it gives you a chance to get your thoughts out there, to bounce them off of someone that may not be, you know, a close friend and that's okay, right? Sometimes I've had the best conversations with talking to a random stranger at the coffee shop because they weren't invested so emotionally in what I was doing and they were able to give um, better feedback. But a therapist is actually trained to do that. So, um. yeah, I mean, and, and before we, we get taken out of here, I just, like I stated, we are trained. Like we, they, they literally train us in like career, you know, career counseling. So it's not all about the depressed anxiety. I mean, those things come up because that's, we're human. Um, but you can meet with a therapist and literally just talk about career exploration and things of that such. So that that's a thing too.